major car companies pretty much divided the spoils evenly as far as the coveted SECA Trans Am manufacturer's title was concerned. General Motors, through a combination of Chevrolet three times and Pontiac once, captured the title four times. Ford, with its Lincoln Mercury Mercure in the mid-80s and Mustang in 89, racked up five and Audi from Germany garnered one. This decade, however, has seen a dominance by the Bowtie Brigade as they've taken all but last year with a point spread between 14 and 1990 and a whopping 41 in 1992. Until the combined forces of Rausch and Gloy unseated them in 1994, it appeared as though the 90 would be the exclusive domain of Chevrolet. Now, with just two races left in the 95 season, Ford's arch rival stands ready to claim its fifth championship in six years, a feat never before achieved. Should Chevrolet take first and second in today's Trans Am event, they will wrap it up. The battle for corporate bragging rights will be over, and Ford will only be able to wait till next year, a circumstance that does not sit well with the protégés of old Henry. Well, we uh, aren't willing to give it up that easy, so we still got two races to go, and we're going to still try and, and uh, try to win the Manufacturer Championship for Ford. The, um, Series is tougher than ever right now. It's the best racing and real racers. They really like this when it comes down to this What we're trying to do is just have the levelest playing field that we can if the Chevrolet guys do a better job We want it to be because they did a better job not because maybe they had an advantage or maybe we had an advantage If we can make the cars the same and the best guys will and his guys or Roush and their guys or Gloy and their guys can do the best job and the best guys will win the deal That's what we're trying to accomplish. That's what I'd like I think they shouldn't count their chickens before they're hatched. I mean, I have a bunch of friends in Ford Mustangs, and I got a Surefine Mustang, and, uh, you know, this weekend we're going to do everything we can to kick their butt. Given Ford's feelings, it's interesting to take a look at some key categories and noting that Ford has outdistanced Chevrolet in all but the one that counts, the race event wins. In every other category, Ford has led the way all year long, and that might explain the manner in which Chevrolet responds to Ford's complaints. Well, first of all, on the uh, statement of being almost ready to get it, uh, we're still two races away, and looking back at Elkhart Lake, where we finished sixth, uh, we really can't count on manufacturers yet. We're, uh, we're hoping to get that one, certainly, but uh, we're not there yet, so we're still working on that. Uh, one thing we always look at is a lot of the statistics as far as not only race wins, but qualifying results, fast laps, and so on, uh, laps led. And uh, we think that SCCA has done a pretty darn good job of keeping the series pretty darn even this year. Uh, but it really comes down to uh, the individual performance of different teams. And the American Equipment Racing Team specifically has done a real good job as far as uh, getting a car set up for the race that's still running very, very well at the end of the race. And that's the real key here in this series just because the series is so competitive that you've got to have a car that's running 100 miles very well uh, just as well at the end of the race as it did at the beginning of the race. Ford's problem is they're having difficulty translating their pole positions into race wins. And uh, consequently, they're uh, catching a lot of heat from uh, Chevrolet at this point for the Manufacturers' Championship. Well, you know, the Ford guys have always had a bad case of the wannabes. You know, they always want to be the Manufacturers' Champion. Well, you know, we kind of have a saying around here. If it whines and cries, it must be a Ford. Welcome to Prime Network's presentation of round number 10 of the 1995 SCCA Trans Am Championship, coming to you from the southeastern United States, the beautiful circuit at Road Atlanta. Hi everybody, I'm Bill Adam, and today we have a slightly damp track currently, but as we've seen all season long, weather conditions have been changeable for our racing series. Well, even though this is the next to last race in the series, the Manufacturers' Championship can be wrapped up today, but not so for the Drivers' Championship. In spite of the fact that he has yet to win a race, Tommy Kendall, by dint of consistent qualifying and high finishes, still leads nearest competitor Ron Fellows by 15 points. Fellows, of course, has won five of the last six events, including our most recent contest at Watkins Glen. But can he really catch Kendall? Well, let's go down to Professor Chris McClure for a quick course on the science of championship points. 
Well, Bill, the points procurement procedure for any given race weekend involves three different levels. The first of those is the Fast Five qualifying. If you're the fastest qualifier, you get five points. Second fastest, three. Third fastest, a single point. So they put that on the ledger. Then, in the race itself, if you lead a single lap, you get a point. You lead the most laps, you get one more. And, of course, they pay points for finishing position. First place is 30, then 27, 25, and on down the list through 25th position. The most any driver can get in a race weekend is 37. Ron Fellows did that earlier this year during his five out of six streak. Now, that's how you put it all together. And with that in mind, we had a chance earlier to talk to the three remaining antagonists for the championship. Now, in the case of Tom Kendall, 57 more points, regardless of what anyone else does, and the championship is earned. I don't know that you're counting points just yet, but that is the fact. That's the fact. Uh, unfortunately, there's still 69 still available. So uh, it's, with two races to go, we can't really sit back and get too complacent. You know, we need to finish. We need to win this race, really. And uh, that would make things a lot better going into the finale. No one's going to have it clinched. And it's just a matter of, uh, you know, we got to race for every position we can get. Every qualifying point is important, and every race point is important. It's down to three, and we'll meet the other two in just a moment. But uh, with that in mind, it's two guys you know very, very well. Does that help in the situation? Uh, I, just, I just know they want it as bad as I do, you know, and everybody's going to be doing everything they can. There's three good teams involved, three good cars, and three good drivers. So uh, I'm glad I'm in front rather than chasing, you know, but it's, it's still far from comfortable. If Ron Fellows is able to maximize points through the rest of the year, he'd wind up with 306. That would leave Tom Kendall the chance to get 309, but he'd have to perform very, very well. You're the hottest guy around, and, and you said over the last several races in this streak of yours that the only thing you can do is all you can do and let the chips fall where they may. That's exactly what we're trying to do. You know, it's uh, like last week you mentioned to me, Watkins going, hey, you won five of the last six. I mean, I hadn't really thought about it. Because uh, it's not good enough. Um, you know, this, this team has just done a great job, uh, and we've just always tried to stay focused on getting back in the championship hunt. And it doesn't matter how many races we win, we just got to get as many points as we can. With the intense pressure, the manufacturer's battle, this points back. <laughs> oh, I always have fun when I drive. <laughs> yeah, no, the driving part is the fun part, and, and it's it's even more enjoyable when you've got a very good car and, and you know I've had some really enjoyable races this year uh, you know I, I consider Detroit and Three Rivers the two highlights for me so far the best race car I've ever had was at Watkins Glen uh, you know this team has just done a, an absolutely fabulous job and I know there's been lots of whining and complaining but you know I'm the guy who's driven both a Camaro and a Mustang and both very good ones and I'll tell you what the difference is between a Camaro and a Mustang it's Will Moody tuning and engineering this car that's the difference. In the case of Darcy Schrader, the maximum points yield now for the year would be 282. And if he gets that, he also needs Ron Fellows to finish the last two races, sixth or worse, and Tom Kendall, tenth or worse. Then he could get the championship. That's a tall order. But you long ago in this season gave up talking seriously about the title. Yeah, we needed a little help. You know, we, we got way behind on the first race in Phoenix. We threw out that race and got behind everybody, and we've run good since. But uh, without a little help, the way this point situation, as he says, he's got these qualifying points, we've really got hurt by that and uh, our on-track racetrack performance has been pretty good but we've been hurt badly by the uh, by the qualifying thing so it's not over you know we got we got two to go and um, anything can happen but uh, yeah we need a lot of help and we just haven't been getting any help lately at all and so there you have it the points perspective coming into race day at road atlanta and remember we will have a test a little later on meantime they're getting ready to roll the cars out we're ready for action and we'll be back to road atlanta in a moment Using the advanced technology of the Eagle Talon, Dr. Van Ostel, cardiologist, okay, faces perhaps his greatest challenge yet. Clogged artery on the 405. Tea time in 16 minutes. Peace, peace. How are we doing, Doc? Pulse rate's up, heart rate's accelerated. Seems like a normal reaction to Talon's 210 horses. It's all real dry, it's amazing. I think I'm gonna make it. Haven't missed a tea time yet. <laughs> Test it yourself. Make the call, 1-800-2-TEST-EAGLE. Don't
Don't wait. Get the news weekly of motoring, Auto Week. Don't wait for driving impressions. Auto Week drives them all and tells you about them first. Don't wait for car news. Auto Week covers the world. Auto shows the new, the old, and brings it to you fast. Don't wait for racing news. Get the news weekly of motoring. Auto Week brings you the winningest coverage first. Don't wait. Get Auto Week, the news weekly of motoring, now. Call 1-800-232-1520 for this TV race weekend special. Get Auto Week at the lowest price ever, $19.95, for 52 issues. But don't wait. This special offer expires midnight on Tuesday. Get Auto Week at the lowest price ever. Call 1-800-232-1520 now. the Eagle test drive sale along with Vicki Edmison. I'm just checking out this Talon deal. The commute is really getting to me and my Acura. I could see you in an Eagle Talon. Yeah, I could too. 140 horses, double wishbone suspension. <laughs> well, aren't we speedy? Woo! This Talon deal is unbelievable. So's the traffic out there. Lease Eagle Talon ESI now for only $2.29 a month. Coverage of the 1995 SCCA Trans Am Championship is being brought to you by Eagle. Test drive the all-new Eagle Talon at your local Eagle dealer. In spite of the fact that Road Atlanta is considered to be one of the premier facilities in the entire continent, Trans Am has only competed here nine times during the past 29 years. Interestingly, from 1973 forward, there have only been nine separate winners as well. No one has been able to post a second victory. A thought that must have surely crossed the respective minds of Kendall, Fellows, and Schrader, all of whom desperately need to win here to help support their claim to the Drivers' Championship that will be bestowed upon one of them at the conclusion of this, the 30th year of Trans Am competition. The 2.52 miles and 12 turns of this historic venue have puzzled some of the best minds in the sport, and one of those who may or may not be currently puzzled is our expert commentator, David Hobbs. Bill, it is a bit of a puzzle, and in my opinion, it's the most difficult and complex road racing facility in North America, and that's why it's difficult for anybody to win twice here. As we start off a lap, we've just exited turn 12, a very fast downhill right-hander, and we go on to the pit straightaway, which is also slightly downhill and very fast. The front straight here is pretty long, very fast, and slightly downhill, and that downhill attitude continues as you go into turn one, so you've got adverse camber as you try to turn into this corner. As you start reaching the apex, the road starts to go uphill quite steeply, and now you've got camber helping you, so the exit of turn one is very, very quick, and you've got a very short, sharp straight here into turn two, which is right at the top of the hill. This is a critical corner because as you sweep through turn two, you're getting pretty tough on the brakes for turn three, which is an important little corner. As I said, turn three is the top of the hill, and between three and four, there's no elevation change. But as you get the car set up for turn four and turn into four, we now start a real roller coaster ride down through four, long, 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 fast corner. And this is now the S's. And all these have to be taken in one really fast, flowing move. And you want to end up on this side of the corner here as you go into turn five, where the road starts to rise again. But as you exit turn five, you really want to make a good job of that because you've got a fairly long downhill straightaway, which is leading into turn six, which is going to be a great spot for overtaking. The Trans Am cars are going to come out of turn five in third gear, absolutely hard on our throttle, lots of wheel spin, and they're still climbing. Right about here, the road starts to fall down again. And as we come into turn six, we've got a downhill approach. It's wide, it's smooth, and we're going to see a lot of jostling for position here as we go into six. And right about at the apex, the road starts to rise again slightly into turn seven. And more jostling for position here. However, the drivers want to be very careful here that they don't mess up turn seven, because the exit of this leads on to the longest and fastest straightaway here. As the drivers exit the hairpin, they're faced with a long, fast straightaway. And there's no elevation change as they go down this straightaway until they come to turn nine. And right about here, the road starts to drop away again very, very steeply. And when they get to turn 10, right here at the apex, they're at the lowest part of this racetrack again. Suspensions bottom out, very tough on the car, very tough on the driver. And twice, yours truly has exited here with suspension breakages on the right rear of a Can-Am car and a 405,000 car and spun all the way up the hill to turn 11 and I never left the pavement on either occasion. 
as we exit turn 10 right at the bottom of the hill, steep climb up now to turn 11 and hard on the brakes as we come into the turn 11 area. The vehicle access bridge is here, so it's blind from that point of view, and the apex of the corner is right on the brow of the hill, so we've got the apex and the brow. As soon as we cross the apex, we start going downhill again steeply on the way to turn 12, which in these Trans Am cars is almost flat out, about 135 miles an hour, a very, very daunting corner. So that gives you some idea of why it's difficult to be a two-time winner here. Now, there's lots of other stuff going over the showground here, and with more on that, here's Bill Allen with our SCCA Weekly Paddock Report. Well, each week after the Trans Am races, the crews have got a ton of work to do. They have to go through the engines and transmissions, rear axles, brakes, fixed bodywork. But on Bora sets, it's a little bit different. Started out as this plain blue number four, then became blue with some names on it. Now it's orange with names. What's going on here, Jeff? Yeah, it seems like that Boris guy, all he ever wants to do is paint the car and put new decals on. So, you know, we do what we can. Making only a second appearance of the 1995 season is Bruce Barkaloo. Now, Bruce, you ran quite a few races last year, only two this year, but we understand that next year, new car, new team, and you're going to do the whole season. Now, what's changed your mind here? Well, uh, our San Susie Lido, our Jamaican sponsor, with the program was very good for them last year, and they want to do it again, and I love going to Jamaica, so I'm going to go down there as often as I can. I just hope I remember to come back. Well, in the 1995 Trans Am season, these crews normally only have one or two weeks between races to do all of that work. Now, suddenly, you got four weeks off, and I can see you're already coloring tires. Is that all you guys got to do? This is just to fill in the time until we can get our new copies of Windows 95. Well, the Roush team is a two-car team, but one without team orders, because each driver, once the green flag falls, can go at it as hard as he wants. John Gooding, it's a two-car team sponsors too, both drinks, but you're Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew is the one. I mean, it's a great brand here in the South, you know, the All Sport. It's a new brand that Pepsi's got going that's doing really good to compete with Gatorade and the other products out there, but we're still the big guy here. And you obviously think this is the best one. Of course this is the best one. Wait a sec. John obviously <laughs> haven't, hasn't heard that since All Sport came out that the game has changed. And uh, that was in the old days, like when they used to have fixed bass sticks, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, all sport, there's a lot of work out here, so we need to recoup the, the fluids. But I've been looking for an after-dinner drink. Um, I'm going to try this. Let me, let me see Let's how try this go. Hey, hey that's bass. pretty good. Phil Bartelt, one of the best independent runners in the Trans Am Championship, had a great line at Three Rivers, Quebec. After tagging the wall in one of the sessions, he blamed it on the crew. I said, how did the crew do it? They made the car so good, when I turned the wheel, it turned in. Now the crew has got this car working for you so well, and you're finishing. This is your last race of the year. Yeah, it is. Uh, we're looking very much forward to this particular race. We uh, felt a little disappointed at the Glen. Uh, I was looking forward to an excellent race there and, and had a motor go. So this will be the last one this year, and then we're looking forward to next year. So I want to make this one as good as I can make it. And I got a crew that can do it. This paddock report has been brought to you by the SCCA. If you'd like to get a little more excitement on your weekends, then it's time you discovered racing the SCCA way. The Sports Car Club of America is your ticket to the pit lane and the fast lane. For SCCA membership information, call this toll-free number, 1-800-972-6662. That's 1-800-972-6662. Benny's Shoes is now bigger and better. We've expanded our store to give you even more selection. The brands you want. At low discount prices. And still the same fun, friendly service that has made Benny's the place for shoes since 1909. You won't believe your ears. Dirty. Getting an instrument for school is less expensive here than anywhere else. Clarinets, flutes, trumpets, trombones, all starting under $100. Gee. All the major brands and all the minor accessories, everything for the beginner and the not-so-beginner. Alto saxes, tenor saxes, oboes at low, low prices, and complete violin sets starting at $119. Gee. Complete repair facilities on the premises, and we service what we sell. All used instruments are thoroughly cleaned, sterilized, and shop-adjusted to ensure quality. Dirty. You know where we are, you know what we do, so get here now and jam! 
Sports is ready to light the rug. And Sports South's a place to catch all the inside pre-race track talk at the NHRA U.S. Nationals Pat Patterson's Race Week Special. Live Friday night at 8 on Sports South. It's an ongoing, indeed an annual debate about which of the two primary contenders in Trans Am, the Camaro or the Mustang, most closely conforms to the stock model and which might have an aerodynamic advantage. Now, I don't know the answer because I'm not an aerodynamic engineer, but we can do a side-by-side -side comparison and perhaps draw some conclusions. Let's start at the front of the car. This piece right here is called the belt line. Below that is the extension, that's the splitter and the front splitter. Spoiler. In the case of the Mustang, that extends out three inches from the belt line. The comparison on the Camaro, they have a little bit better extension from this belt line to this point is four inches. But we ought to keep in mind we are told that both are three inches further out than the stock model. Now we move to the hood. In the case of the Camaro, big bubble in the middle, higher than the stock model for air cleaner clearance. That's fairly standard in the racing business. This has an indentation here here, perhaps a little bit of downforce on the front is developed here. By comparison, on the Mustang, we have a flat outside, no indentation here. The bubble in the middle is taller, again, than the stock model for air cleaner clearance. Now, this vein on the stock Mustang is very subtle. That one's a little bit taller. Is that an advantage? You be the judge. Now, let's go to the front wheel well. First of all, we have this and this. Both have a flare. The Camaro's is a little bit bigger evacuating air in this direction. But the space in the wheel well is different. On the Camaro, it's closer to the tire at the back than it is over here on the Mustang by a couple of inches. So air evacuates here, less load underneath, perhaps a downforce advantage there. You be the judge. The shoulders of the car at the doors, pretty comparable. Not much of a problem there. But at the back, the difference is a good deal more pronounced. On the Camaro, a rounded shoulder, a gentle curve down to the side of the car. On the Mustang, it's almost square. The deck at the back is nearly flat. In fact, it's subtly concave, so it comes up just a little bit on the outside, perhaps bringing air to the spoiler a little bit more effectively. At the back of the Camaro, a longer window, and then this bump. On the stock Camaro, there's a wing here and an airspace underneath. Here, they just made it a solid piece. The SCCA asked them to, but it does fit the stock template. Now, on the rear spoiler, in the middle, they're allowed six inches of height. In the middle on the Camaro, that's what it is, but on the outside, side, it's a lot taller. That's a result of the contour of the body, where it falls off here. On the other side, the Mustang spoiler is six inches here, six inches there at the maximum, even all the way across, a product of the flat deck. Now, you can tip this back and adjust the spoiler to get more downforce or less, but you can't have this plane beyond the back plane of the bumper. That is the limit. Who has the advantage? We really don't know. The debate goes on, but SCCA has announced its intention to take one of each of those cars to Lockheed's wind tunnel in Marietta, Georgia this week and run a side-by-side -side test. We may soon have an answer. We'll also have some basis for 1996 rules. Now, the cars are beginning to roll out toward the grid, and while they do that, let's join David Hobbs with this week's Chrysler Motorsports Report. The rules for SCCA World Challenge Racing are just a little bit complicated when it comes to displacement and weight, etc. But suffice to say, if you win a lot, they add a lot of weight. And these Team Archer Motorsports cars have had a lot of weight added, but they still won two out of the last three races. Mike Archer, you're in charge of the team. How are they winning with all that weight? Well, I think the performance of the Eagle Talon uh, with the all-wheel drive helps us out a whole lot. Uh, and that of our competitors, uh, the last race, having problems. We were just running around third and fourth positions, and all of a sudden, boom, they're gone, and here we come home for the win. Well, to take a look at this week's winners here at beautiful road Atlanta, Neil Hanneman once again won for Eagle Talon over Charles Coker, teammate Willie Lewis third, Kermit Upton's BMW fourth, and David Seiss comes home in fifth place in the touring class. Now to move over to super, to super production, I should say sports class, I apologize, John Heiner's he's big Corvette over at Doc Bundy's similar car, Victor Sifton's Camaro, Steve Dunn and BMW, Yock and Roar, the first of the Porsches, a little bit of a change there. Now moving back 
into super production. We see that Paul Booher won this one for the famous team that won the first race of the year, that being Saturn. Peter Gunningham second in the Honda, Ron Emick, Terry Borcheller, and Albert Merkel comes home in fifth place. A great day of racing here at Road Atlanta for all of the World Challenge cars. Blindfolded Dan is trying to guess what car we got here, which for you folks watching at home is the uh, Eagle Town. This is dual airbags. These are leather trim seats. I feel a CD player, 300ZX. Oh, keep trying, Dan. Dan is trying to identify this new sports coupe. Toyota Supra. From Chrysler's newest brand. Forget Supra. I feel a Lexus SC 300. It's Thank an Eagle Talon, Dan. Right. Okay, just give me a little hint. Can you tell me the color? I come from a family that's used to winning championships, lots of them. But on the racetrack, that doesn't help. Because there's more to winning than just me. You've got to have the best of everything. Right down to the Goodyear Eagle tires. Goodyear, number one in racing, number one in tires. The Indy 500 and the championship. Goodyear's been good for me. So, I can lease this all-new Eagle Talon for this price? Uh, yeah, right. And what, the steering wheel's extra? No, performance suspension, dual airbags, easy! <laughs> Lame engine, right? Check this out. Talon's 140 horses move. Yeah, let me see this deal one more time here. What's this part about wearing a blonde wig and high heels? Oh, I just stuck that on there to see if anybody pays attention to the small print. <laughs> Talon ESI, only $229 a month. Welcome back to Road Atlanta. Bill Adam, David Hobbs, and Chris McClure with you under those threatening skies once again. But they cannot take away the beauty of this circuit because it is one of the greatest on the North American continent. And now, let's get down to Chris McClure. He was fifth quick in the qualifying. That puts him on pole position here at Road Atlanta. And you're familiar with that position, wet or dry. Well, I am. It's a nice place to start whether it's uh, wet or dry here in Atlanta. Uh, you know, the spray in the wet, it's a good advantage to be up front not be getting any spray. And in the dry, this can be a tough place to pass. So uh, I'm happy with our starting spot. But if it ends up raining, if it ends up being a wet race the whole time, it's going to be, uh, I think, more of a survival of the fittest than who has the ultimately fast car. Scott Sharp, he's ready to go from the point here at Road Atlanta. I agree with him. I think that could be a huge advantage today. We're looking at the sky as it had rained earlier. 77 degrees, but 90% humidity. So it is going to be a very physically demanding day for the drivers. And as you can see, there's a 50-50 chance of rain, maybe with thunderstorms. We hope they do not come in, but always the possibility here in the south. See the clouds hanging over the track. Take a look at the mix of the cars in today's field. We have 18 Chevrolets, a huge advantage for them over eight Fords and a pair of Oldsmobiles bringing up the back end. A big, big advantage for Chevy in the, the numbers game, David. Yeah, it is indeed. And of course, of those 17 are Camaros and there's one lone Corvette out there. So the Mustangs are going to have their work cut out to, to do well here this afternoon. Anybody's going to have their work cut out to do well here because it is a miserable looking track. It will be a major gamble for all the teams. As you can see, there are still little wet patches on the track because we're going to take a look at the grid today. You just heard that young Scott Sharp is on the pole today in that Rain X Camaro and outside of him, a very familiar face to us all, Bill Saunders on the Highway Master team. On road two, inside we've got Dorsey Schrader, a two-time winner this year, and outside him, Tom Kendall leading the championship but yet to win a race. Tommy Kendall, of course, looking for his first and vital win here this afternoon if he wants to win that championship. And, of course, Dorsey Schrader is not yet out of the championship hunt himself. He still is mathematically alive, so a hungry driver sitting alongside Kendall. Going back to row three, the fastest qualifier picking up five valuable points, Ron Fellows. He is desperate to keep his championship hopes alive. And outside of Ron, Brian Dill, who was the fastest runner in the dry session. So Brian outside with the second picket car. Then back onto row four, inside is Jamie Gallus, Ron Fellows' teammate in the Camaro, and of course Boris said with his new paint job there in the number four car, new sponsors, new paint, of course Boris had a very dramatic exit from the last race we saw from Watkins Glen, looking to do better here this afternoon. The strength of the car is always appreciated. Back into row five, inside number five, Paul Gentilosi. Outside of him in the Valvoline car, it's Brian Simmo, the no fear man. Then on row 
506 inside Dale, Dale Phelan. And outside him is Tim McAdam. Tim McAdam, of course, running for Rookie of the Year this year in the Trans Am in the uh, world's best oil-sponsored Camaro. As we're looking back through the field, you can see the car is getting wheeled into possession. Price Cobb will be on row seven. Not a great qualifying possession, but with his experience, you can never count about. Outside, the perennial amateur, Jerry Simmons, down from Ancaster, Ontario, Canada, the number 76 Camaro. There's Jerry right there. And the rest of the field looks like this. Back on row eight, we have Don Sack alongside Ray Kong making his return to the Trans Am. Row nine, young Rob Rizzo alongside of John Gooding, a pair of the Roush teammates. Ford occupying all of row number nine. Right behind them in row 10, Bruce Nesbitt and RJ Valentine. Back into row 11, John Miller IV, that's a pretty exotic sounding name, alongside of Phil Bartel, who, as he will tell you, is making his last run today of the 95 season. Another great amateur driver, always tries hard. Bruce Barkaloo and Bill Eagle in row 12, Max Lagarde and James Moyer in row 13, all Chevrolets back here. And row 14, Tony Abe and Trent Terry, who were put to the back of the field because of a slight rules infraction that we will talk about later on. Well, the racing is about to start here at Road Atlanta. The sky is dry right now and the pavement is drying as we speak. Don't go away and we'll be back with the start of the Road Atlanta Trans Am Classic. <laughs> Hey, you always hear about what goes into oil. Well, I'm going to tell you what you'll get out of Kendall oil. One thing you'll get is an engine that lasts. And during the Kendall Twist and Shout sweepstakes, you can win a new ride and other cool prizes. Just buy a case of Kendall and check under the cap. There's 12 chances to win in every case. Hey, look, I won! I won! This is easier than winning races. Living out here where the gators are dinner isn't easy on a truck like me. So when I'm blue, I have an idea that works. I pour down a bottle of Berryman fuel injector cleaner. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh. Wow! I feel friskier. And you'll feel it in your vehicle too. I gotta run! It's Carlton Amelia Island, where the time-honored traditions of a sporting vacation are only a short drive away. Experience unsurpassed amenities, uncompromised personal service, and the inspirational elegance and timeless beauty of our Grand Beach Resort. The Ritz-Carlton Amelia Island, just minutes north of Jacksonville, Florida. Welcome back to the beautiful Road Atlanta track here at Brazelton, Georgia. This race is about to get underway. Cars are firing up as we speak. Looking at the car on the pole today, that is Scott Sharp, of course, the past Trans Am champion, sitting in the car normally occupied by Greg Pickett. Greg decided to give it over to the younger, faster member of his family, I suppose, and maybe Greg's at home watching the Raiders play. Greg, I wish I was with you in that game. You can see the track is drying out quickly, but that should be a fairly serious problem on the opening laps, David, because it really reduces the number of safe spots to pass. Yeah, it's one of those interesting combinations, a drying track like this, but of course they will do one pace lap, so they'll get a good idea. That's the sort of thing that's going to be a problem. Water running across the track. We've had so much rain the last couple of days. I don't think that's ever going to dry up as the race goes on. Well, these cars, once they get going, the tire is up to speed. We'll be having hot tires to dry and bake it away. We also have radio communications with that man right there, the number 15 Highway Master Car of Price Cobb. And David, let's give him a call. Hi, Price. Are you there? Yeah, David. How are you doing? Well, I'm doing fine. What does the track look like to you? I can see it's pretty damp in a couple of spots, but otherwise not too bad. Yeah, honestly, it looks like all the line, except so far through just the apex of turn one, we've got a dry line, Dave. The difficulty for all of us, though, is that I think there's only one car, if any, that have anything but brand new tires. It'll be tough to get them up on the first lap. Now, Price, you didn't qualify very well. The weather was all messed up over the weekend. You're back in 14th spot. It's going to be a bit of a struggle to get to the front, isn't it? Yeah, I'd like to think not, but I, I hazard a guess you're right. I'll just have to be real aggressive. Well, he can temper aggression with experience. Price, one of the most experienced drivers in this field, 
has had victories in virtually every type of car imaginable, so you couldn't put a better driver in that car right now. You see the windshield wiper in place that they all hope they are not going to be using those today. Highway Master car going around the track here, number 15 of Price Cobb. Yeah, he's slotted right in the middle of the field here. He's in 14th position, which is almost exactly the middle. He's got some pretty stiff competition inside in front of him. You can see there how the track pretty predominantly now is dry, and as he says, uh, it'll soon really finish off drying out. But uh, getting past people around here is not easy. You've got a couple of points on this track where you can really overtake. Other than that, it's uh, all, um, you know, the, the guys use all the road up, and it's kind of hard to get around people. Yeah, I recall last year, for example, that the, uh, the race leader, there's a nice shot of Price, and of course the winner back at Phoenix, the first race of the 95 Trans Am Series, and a really fine, fine driver. So he is going to have his hands full, and as he just admitted, that he too is concerned about trying to get these brand new tires to get some sort of temperature on this pace lap. Chris McClure, what do you think? I think that's exactly the case. Three of the top five oh. in the field have uh, brand new tires, but Tommy Kendall and Ron Fellows have scrub tires that may give them an early advantage. And as far as who's going to win this race, as we get a little bit of a sprinkle in the pit, I think Tommy Kendall is due and ready. Well, it appears there's one man that definitely has the odds stacked against him right now, and that's Tony Ave. He is off the track and stuck. Now, perhaps Tony was trying to warm up his tires with the combination of cold tires and dampness. He has spun someplace, so I'm sure the pace car will be doing one more lap to give them a chance to get Tony back onto the track and resume his position at the back of the field. Well, and Tony Arby's day not going like it's supposed oh. to at all. Pace car lights obviously still on at this stage as he's going to have to go around again. We'll be on a full course and caution now while they get Tony Arby's car out of that ditch. This will work to everyone's advantage. They get one more lap to try and scrub their tires in, so we'll take this word for a commercial and be right back with the racing. In these mountains, you need a tough truck. Dave Ashley, search and rescue volunteer. Trails, I tend to make my own. It's one torture test after another. But the people I'm looking for depend on someone to find them. Well, I depend on something too, my Ford F-Series. How do you learn a job like this? Let's just say I drive something tougher than a golf cart on the weekends. Ford F-Series, the best-selling trucks are built Ford Tough. Mother's California Gold, the finest cleaners, polishes, and finish restorers. Carnuba Wax protects and shines. Easy to apply, looks great. California Gold, there's no shine like Mother's. I didn't want everybody to notice, you know, from being almost completely bald to having a full head of hair. HR has developed a gradual procedure over 15 years ago. We just give them a little bit of hair at a time, and it looked like the hair was actually growing back. Finally, something that looks real. When you come to HRS Atlanta, we will go over all the different procedures, the non-surgical and the surgical. We will help you determine which procedure will actually be best for you. Call HRS and find out about our non-surgical and surgical procedures. Maybe you'll get a MasterCard so you can use one card for practically everything. Maybe you'll get one because no card is more accepted. Or maybe you'd just like to save 15% on that altimeter compass stopwatch. Presenting Master Values, immediate savings on all kinds of things. Because while MasterCard can make your life easier, saving around $1,000 on a Royal Caribbean cruise couldn't hurt. Look for your MasterCard invitation in the mail and apply today. Well, back at Road Atlanta, just a moment ago, this is what happened. The wrecker was able to pull Tony Ave out of the mud, so he will rejoin at the back of the pack where he started, except this time he is at least a lap behind the field. Right now, let's go for a board down to Chris McClure. We're with Dan Banks talking to Tom Kendall right now, explaining what to do on the start coming back around. Danny, the scar skies are getting a little darker. How quickly would you pull the trigger on rain tires? Well, we sort of leave that up to Kendall. Uh, depending on if there's standing water, we'll probably go to rains fairly quick. Right now, if there's a dry line, I think if all the cars stay in a row there, it'll dry it out pretty good. We'll just keep on dries. If it comes to a downpour, we'll try it. 
That's the story. We're just anticipating, but it is sprinkling just a little bit on the pits. Okay, David Hobbs, now it is showtime. Who do you pick to win? Well, based on the law of averages, I'm going to pick him, number 11, Tommy Kendall, because he is, with the way that qualifying went this weekend, he's in fourth spot. The main guy in front of him is Dorsey Schrader, who he's going to have a lot of difficulty getting around, but I think if he can get around him, he'll be home free. And Ron Fellows, in turn, has got to get around Tommy Kendall. So I'm going to go for Tommy Kendall. Time me one. Well, I'm going to go with the, with the guy on the roll. I'm going to go with Ron Fellows, because he has been just unbelievable of late, and I still have not seen any chinks in the armor. The car looks solid. The, the Will Moody preparation is always great, and I think Fellows is inspired. He can see the championship closer than it has ever been before. So, Ron, you're my man today. You can see they are just down through the dip, getting nicely lined up. The pace car does have the lights off at this point. We expect he will duck into pit lane as they come up over the top of that hill where David Hubbs left trails of rubber years ago. And glad that you're here with us. Left them. Sure, did leave trails of rubber. Lots of smoke. You can see Scott Sharp on almost a little bumping there. Oh, that was a bump. Is that a little psychological game or uh, intimidation, maybe? Looks like he's under the throttle very early, Scott Sharp is, as they're coming down. No start. He was on the gas way too early. SEC officials have deemed that was not close enough. But they do get a chance to warm up their tires. Now, each of these laps, by the way, is counting. So, although they are slow laps, the length of this race is being reduced every time around. They should try and make a reasonably quick lap around here to try and get their tires up to a temperature, maybe reform at the end of the back straight and hope to do a cleaner start this time. One of the things they're gonna to have to put up with, you know, there's mud on the track now, because it rained so heavily on Friday and Saturday that you can see where the water's run across the track. It's dragged that Georgia clay, so they're gonna have that to contend with. And as it dries out, that in turn, of course, will turn into fine dust, which gets on everything, and uh, tends to make the surface pretty slippery. Down here at turn six is one of the few places where the track looks extremely clean and of course this is a place where we're going to see a lot of overtaking efforts I think coming into here because it's smooth it's wide and it's a good corner to, to outbreak people into yeah that really does look good down there the track appears in fine condition at this far end of the straight and of course just around this corner is where Tony Abbey spun let's get back down to Chris McClure well, during the race this time Ebersol handles Bill Saunders car Bill on the front row like he was at Portland was his his approach and demeanor any different than then when when it was a first absolutely it was different at that time right now he's pretty comfortable being up there he knows all these guys and he knows that he's supposed to follow Scott through the first corner that's what he tried to do but Scott wanted to run early <laughs> and he got boxed out by by um, by Dorsey and then it, it really looked like the SCCA officials were on top of this thing and they they called it off I let him run down through here and then I told him that there was no green no green so he didn't run over Scott okay good luck to you have a good Thank day Tom Ebersol he talks to Bill Saunders who's more comfortable this time up front yeah, he appeared very comfortable. We saw him just before the start of the race in the uh, Highway Master Hospitality area for our ice cream, and he was quite confident. Hi, Price Cobby, you still there, Price? David, how are you doing? Well, you're not doing very well so far, Price. You're four laps into this race, and you haven't passed anybody yet. What's up? Hey, uh, if I can't do that little bit of footwork, it's got to be the other thing, huh? <laughs> Well, good luck. You're coming down to my favorite spot, the dip at the end of the straight. So uh, keep it on the straight and narrow there, and good luck, and I'll leave you alone now. You guys. Price Cobb in that other Highway Master car, the number 15 car, also looking forward to a really great race. Tim McAdam alongside, number 28, world's best oil. And there is Price, and he is trying to figure out exactly where he can go on the drop of the green. Does he go inside, outside, watch for contact? Oh, it's well, a lot of cars. Of course, another thing they've got to watch today on this start, I mean, very often you can put a wheel over the edge to squeeze by somebody, but not today, because that ground is absolutely sodden. So. Well, one more time around this final corner toward the starter stand. We'll watch up ahead for the green flag. There it is. The Trans Am Classic is underway. Down to turn one, David. And into turn one, Scott Sharp has the inside line, and Dorsey Schrader comes through with him, and Ron Fellows comes through with him, too, and Ace is out. Tommy Kendall right at the start of this race. Boy, that's a shocker. I can't believe that Kendall allowed himself to get put into that position where well, he actually he just, lost. He just got boxed in. There was nothing to eat. Bill Saunders was in front of him and a little bit off the pace. And the inside line was significantly quicker than the outside line, which, of course, was led by Scott Sharp. So 
Uh, that's what happened to poor old Tommy Kendall, and uh, so he's now stuck behind Ron Fellows. But hardly stuck behind Ron, of course. Don Sack already making a pit stop. It appears that they're working on the wiper motor, although why they're doing that, they're certain. Now look at Highway Master Car up the outside. Dorsey Schrader and Ron Fellows both go by Bill Saunders. Fellows not content to let anybody get away at this point. Almost touching Schrader. Now they're on the back straight, the fastest section of the course. Look at that red dust getting blown up already. And way in the background, it looked like Jamie Gallus almost trying to take Tom Kendall. He is. Jamie Gallus alongside Tommy Kendall down this long straight. Dorsey Schrader goes to the lead, passes Scott Sharp, 175 miles an hour down through this dip. And look at the car twitch. Dorsey Schrader's car is incredibly quick down the straight. We see his Fords are, there's no doubt about it. Tommy Kendall there, again gets boxed in. Whoa, and there's that Bryce Cobb coming up. Boy, I'll tell you one thing, young Jamie Gallus is making a really stunning display right here too. You can see he is right behind his own teammate, Ron Fellow, Scott Sharp now dropping back one more position. And Fellows slams up the outside, and Jamie Gallus also. Jamie Gallus looks in a mood like he might be going after his teammate Ron. Ron Hall, Ron. Just amazing display right now by young Gallus. So Ford is leading right now at Dorsey Trader. Ron Fellows, Jamie Gallus, the two teammates from AER Racing. Buzz McCall's team down through the S's. Beautiful track here. Here's a replay, David. Take us through. Coming down to that turn six area, there's Ron Fellows in the background, Bob, uh, Sharp in the front. Dorsey Schrader right behind him as they file through turn six. Ron Fellows now comes right up to Dorsey Schrader. And here we see that take for the lead down the back straight away. And look at the speed that wow. Ford's got as he slashes past Scott Sharp on that long, fast straight, 170 miles an hour, down into that dip. A real display of horsepower and driving there. As you can see, he was putting his car out of the damp part of the circuit. So took a bit of a risk there because wheel spin, I think, would have put him sideways at a horrendous speed. So, Dorsey Schrader still leading this race. The car looking a little bit weavy as it goes through that dip. But then, of course, they are doing 170 miles an hour. Loses all the road coming out of turn 11. Ron Fellows not far behind them. Both of them putting a little bit of daylight between themselves now with Jamie Gallus. And now Tommy Kendall's really on the warpath. Tom Kendall may be finally getting the bit in his teeth. There's a lot racing coming our way today, so don't go away. It's Country Star Jamboree at Six Flags. Come join our bonanza of a celebration. Enjoy arts and crafts, special exhibits, festive foods, and foot stomping shows every day, September 2nd through the 10th, plus weekends in September. Featuring in concert this Saturday, Joe Diffie. Pick up big savings on your Six Flags admission with discount coupons from Burger King. And come out for Country Star Jamboree, only at Six Flags Over Georgia. At the New Home Shopping Network, you set the rules. Like more regular programs, so I can find just what I want. Why should I compromise? I want quality and great value. Give me all the details. Tell me everything. Two in the morning, I want customer service. I get it. New things, unusual things. Just keep them coming. It's your home. Shouldn't you set the rules? Home Rules. America's first home shopping network serves you best. Everybody clear on the rules. Final word in racing with the highlights and the lowlights. If it's got a motor and somebody races it, chances are you'll find it on Pit Road. The final edition every Sunday live on Sports Sound. Welcome back to Road Atlanta. Bill Adam and David Hobbs, Chris McClure in the pits today enjoying great Trans Am racing here at one of the great circuits of the United States. Down at the far end of the circuit, it looks like Fellows maybe is closing on Dorsey, David. He is indeed. There's no doubt about it. He'll be past door now. Let's see how quick the Ford is down this straightaway as they come off turn seven here, scrubbing for grip. There's all that mud on the road on the exit to there. This is where the Ford's got the advantage. It pulls away down the back straightaway here. I, I think they've got good horsepower. Boy. And then, of course, here comes Tommy Kendall, also going extremely quick down the straightaway. But when they get to the dip, that's Jamie Gallus there. 
It certainly does look like the Ford does have some horsepower in that motor. And look at the Camaro closes right up under braking. Just oh, and look at this. Now, here's a good chance. Wow, if he pulls that off, it's a miracle. He's going to get him. Down the inside, Whoa. Dorsey made a mistake. Ron Fellows is now our leader in this transit. Dorsey just a fraction wide, and look at his windshield wipers going. Which I'm sure he doesn't like, because that's probably started out accidentally, and that'll be smearing his screen. There's no doubt about it. The combination of Ron Fellows, his crew chief, Will Moody, and that Chevrolet is pretty dynamite when it comes to cornering and braking. It has got just tremendous grip compared to any other car out there. It's a great balancing situation right now. It appears that the Fords have a little bit of a horsepower advantage, and the Chevrolet is definitely the better car through the corner. Here's a replay, David. I mean, this is coming to turn 12. These guys are going 135 mile an hour here. Not the sort of place where you want to be aced uh -huh. out. And Dorsey Schrader gave him plenty of race room there. Had to lift out of the throttle to let him through, which, of course, will have put him back. Look at it again. Boy, what Absolutely. a nice piece of driving on both drivers' parts. Dor uh, Dorsey Schrader absolutely had to give best, but Ron Fellows was not going to give up either. And a good point, too. Those wipers just are enough to take away some concentration from Dorsey Schrader. Let's get back down to Chris McClure. Well, Ronnie Fellows has run to the front. He's running soft on the front in terms of tire compound. Last year, left front, you went 600. This year, 430, Will Moody. Is that a risk, a calculated one here? It's a calculated risk. We thought with all the rain that the track be pretty green and it might be pretty hard to keep grip with a four with a 600 left front. That's why he went with a 430. And now you cross your fingers and wait. Well, I think the weather is still in our favor in that regard. I would have to bit, agree. A little bit of rain right now. I think we're all right. Fellas, I have to agree with him. I think that's probably a good call at this point. It sure looks like it's a good call, Chris, as Ron Fellows is stretching out a lead every lap a little bit more. And right now, Dorsey Schrader is boxed behind Whoa. Don Sack. Almost contact he there, did in fact. He did touch him. Ooh, that's turn four. That's pretty quick there. And the next three competitors, very tight. Look at how Candle was able to close up because those cars were boxed in. Right on Jamie Gallo's back bumper now. Lead that Ron Fellows has got already. I mean, his car is just crushing this year, isn't it? Just... And Dorsey is leaving us. Why is he leaving those wipers going? He, they may not want to switch off. You perhaps can't find a switch, you know, when, when you're in the race car there. Some of these things don't fall easy to hand. Maybe the switch has even fallen off. Possibility. You can see Raynex car all the way back in fifth place. Now, Scott Sharp, who is our full setter, has dropped back to fifth. Tom Cantle running up in fourth place, just off the bumper of Jamie Gallus' car. So, yeah, great drop, battles. Drop him down the straightaway there. There's Boris said. Boris said, and then, look at this Highway Master Battalion. All three cars, nose to tail, down the back straight. That made a good photograph for them. They're going to get the out. I think they'd rather have it running one, two, three, as opposed to back a few places, but onto the front straight one more time. Ron Fellows is extending his lead very dramatically at this point. That is two, three, and four. Dorsey, Jamie Gallus, and Tommy Campbell. Jamie Looks like Gallus Jamie's going down it. the inside of Dorsey Schrader. Dorsey Schrader slams the door on Tommy Kendall. Tommy Kendall trying to go around the outside of turn two. This is going to be difficult. Oh, I just cannot quite do it. No. Very, very close battle. This is maybe the most impressive performance I have ever seen out of Jamie Gallus today. Well, he's certainly driving very, very nicely this afternoon. And see again through those S's, the Chevrolet significantly outpacing the Ford as they come down through those S's round turn five. And look at this, Ron Fellows already up to turn six. Huge gap between him and second, third, fourth, and fifth, which we're looking at now. Now, ideally, wouldn't Ron like to just be able to hold that? Here's a replay, David. Coming off turn 12 there. Dorsey Schrader coming down to the front straightaway. Jamie Gallus drafts him into turn one, gets himself on the inside. Again, Dorsey Schrader has to give best. Slight damp there. And Tommy Kendall's just right behind him. Thought he might follow through, but that didn't work. I have been so impressed all year long with the stability shown by the two Buzz McCall cars. They are excellent. Now, if Chevrolet do win this race today, this will clinch the manufacturer's title. It is all over, so they will have the bragging rights for first and second, of course. So very important that they try and maintain these positions. Ford understand this, believe me, they're well aware of it. And I'm sure that both the Roush and Tom Gloy teams have been advised of this. So very important bragging rights. We'll take a look at the top 10 here. 
Ron Fallows continuing to lead, driving that beautiful Buzz McCall car. His own teammate, the perfect position, Jamie Gallus running the number two Camaro in second. Dorsey Schrader, Ray Bestis, Mustang running in third, the Tom Gloy stable. Then Roush with Tom Candle and back into Scott Kent. Scott Sharp, I should say, is back in fifth place now. A lot more racing coming our way, so don't go away as the rains just start to fall once again. The world's most gifted athletes will test their medal next summer at the 1996 Olympic Games. And you can be part of it. Don't miss your opportunity to witness history, as men's and women's Olympic soccer champions will be decided at Sanford Stadium in Athens, Georgia. For ticket information, call 1-404-744-1996. The good life only begins at Life College. When I grow up, I need a chiropractor just like you. Good idea. I'm proud to be a Life College graduate. I have a great practice. Helping people is what Life College is all about. Let us help you make the most out of your life. One oil says it's got special molecules. Another says it's for little engines. One even makes it sound like oil can think. Come on. What's the square root of four? See, I use Kendall oil because it lets my engine do the talking. So next time you change oil, be smart. Use Kendall. Win a 95 Pontiac Grand Prix and other cool stuff. Get a scratch and win game card when you have your oil changed at a participating Kendall dealer. Kendall Motor Oil. Hey man, buy it. Long, we have talked about threatening skies, and today the threat is coming true. It is raining a little heavier here at Road Atlanta. You can see there's a haze now. Ron Fellows occasionally flicking on that wiper. Here is the gamble that Chris McClure talked about earlier with Danny Baker. Look at the spray, spray coming, up, coming up there off those slick tires under the bridge. Very slippery here. Whee, he slides down. Is he going to come? No. Nope. Going to stay out. I think this is a, the important thing right now that these cars do stay out. Well, Second place. It's going to be a brave man that decides to break off first. As you can see now, lots of people have got their wipers going. Maybe a help, maybe not. Jamie Gallus twitching as he goes into turn one there. Now then, the shower is sweeping across the circuit, so it's going to be different. You can see it there across the air. It's going to be wetter in some places than others. And this is a, it's a huge gamble at this point because they don't know whether to do a tire change or not. Let's get down to Chris McClure. Well, no one's come in for a tire change, but this is from Darcy Schrader's car. It might be in a little while. The crew getting out the rain tires. Rick, is he saying anything? Is the track going away dramatically? Uh, he just said the track's getting a little slick, and we're just going to wait till see if they throw a red flag. We're not going to come in unless they do. Running real well right now. So I'd like to stay there. What if the leaders were to come in? Would you follow them at that point and if they made the decision first? Uh, I think we'd still hold out for red flag. Yeah. Just have to wait and see on that one. Okay, mind games tactics being played out in the pits right now, but the track's going away. It's raining harder, guys. David, what would you do? Well, well apart from the fact <laughs> the old heart be right up in the mouth, um, I guess you'd just have to play it by by uh, the rules. Of, ooh, look at that spray now. I mean, this is going to get difficult. Yeah, and that Once is you the... start spraying, showing that much spray with slick tires, it's getting real, really slick. Right at the end of the street, too. That is the high-speed area here at Road Atlanta. Again, up over the crest, and delicate throttle application down through this section. You can see Dorsey does appear to be closing up a little bit on Jamie Gallus. Yellow flag coming out. It is being shown. Let's get down to Chris again. It's interesting to note, I think, at this point with the track going away, 1993, Scott Sharp started on the pole in the wet twice and won, and he did it on slicks all the way. He never did come in, even if the opportunity presented itself, to go to rain tires. That's the kind of risk some folks will take. It's a tough call. No, you know, and I, I think I tend to go that way. It's very easy to say that, sitting up in the, the relative security and safety of the broadcast booth. But the problem is, if you do make a pit stop, as we're watching 65, that's Tony Ave coming in. If you do make a pit stop, it takes so long to do the tire change. And then if the track dries out again, oh, you're dead in the water. But I also don't like the way that we have to wait for the red flag these days. I think it should be entirely up to the driver. And if he wants to come in and change tires and gets it wrong, uh, just too bad. And if he gets it right, good for him, you know. Um, 
this declaring race as wet or dry and then stopping the race so that everybody can come in and change their tyres. I, I don't see the real logic behind that. No, I am in agreement with you on that. I think it, it puts more of the challenge to the driver where ultimately it should be. Ron Fallows is our leader right now ahead of his own teammate, Jamie Gallus. The two Chevrolet Camaros setting up front in a very nice position. And as you can see, it's very wet along that straight. That's where the real wet is at the moment. Jamie Gallus right behind Ron Fellows there. So this will be uh, playing into the hands slightly of the fours. They can catch up under this caution period. We'll take a look at standing. Chevrolet, of course, one and two. Dorsey Schrader, Tom Candle, Boris said now up to fifth place, all driving for Ford. Dorsey and Boris, both from Tom Gloy. Scott Sharp, who is our pole setter, back to six, but still hanging on. Then Paul Gentilosi and Price Cobb with Rocket Sports. Brian Simo, the Valvoli car. Bill Saunders is back in tenth, so he is still holding good position. 11th through 15th looks like this. Brian Till, Tim McAdam, young Rob Rezzo, who's doing a good job for Roush this year. John Gooding and Dale Fallon. We'll take this break for a few minutes of important messages and then be back with more racing from Road Atlanta. Football can be exciting. But truck football? Now that's a rush. <laughs> so if you're going to tackle it, you better get a hold of the right equipment. A 1995 Ford Ranger 4x4. Red 39! Complete with switch-on four-wheel drive, new four-wheel anti-lock brakes, and a whopping four-liter V6. So get a Ford Ranger 4x4 and play truck football. How am I going to spike this thing? <laughs> The complete story of the Trans Am series is now told for the first time ever on video in the history of the Trans Am series, 1966 to 1992. Packed with historic film and photos and interviews with Roger Penske, David Hobbs, Parnelli Jones, and many others, the history of the Trans Am series video chronicles the series from 1966 right up to the championship battle of 92. Order the history of the Trans Am series video for only $29.95 by calling 1-800-727-6689. That's 1-800-727-6689. In these mountains, you need a tough truck. Dave Ashley, search and rescue volunteer. Trails, I tend to make my own. It's one torture test after another. But the people I'm looking for depend on someone to find them. Well, I depend on something too, my Ford F-Series. How do you learn a job like this? Let's just say I drive something tougher than a golf cart on the weekends. Ford F-Series, the best-selling trucks are built Ford Tough. Get the inside scoop, the division news, and dish out the winner. All the news from your favorite pro teams on DirecTV's Pro Football Insider with Fred Edelstein. Sunday at 12.30 on Sports Zone. Welcome back to Road Atlanta. Our threatening skies are threatening a lot more seriously than they were earlier today. You can see the rain is coming down at a very steady pace right now, making it miserable for the drivers. And you can even see there that puddles are starting to build up. The cars are still being led around this circuit by a pace car, waiting to see if the rain should subside or if it happens to get any heavier. We certainly hope it is the former. And now we're going to take a look that's something a little different while a pace car goes out here. We'll take a look at the latest Oldsmobile track fact. Oldsmobile division is involved in many things in the racing world, both on the track and, of course, off the track. This is one of the things that they're involved in off the track. One of several PPG pace cars that do alternate in pacing some of the world's greatest drivers as a member of the PPG pace car team. Just a quick look at another Oldsmobile Motorsports activity. Yeah, nice car, Chris. He gets all the good convertibles. Yes, absolutely. My Beautiful gee. paint job. It is gorgeous. Well, we have been advised that apparently a red flag may be shown this time around and the cars will be stopped in the pits to put on the full wet tires. The crews do have them ready there. See, it will be a 15 minute stop. So, Ron Fellows, what would this do to you if you're leading the race? I'd be pretty ticked off is what I'd be, to be quite frank. Uh, I'd want to stop when I want to stop. Mind you, I'd have stopped in conditions like this anyway. I put them on 10 minutes ago, and now I'd be on my way again. But um, So they're all going to be led into the pit lane. They're all going to have 15 minutes in which to change their tyres. 
by which time, of course, it will have stopped raining. And another hour or another 45 minutes, they'll come in again and change them all back to dry. Well, it puts a, a premium on the pit crews today that they're going to have to maybe have their hands full should they go back to a dry weather condition. Now, these skies are still so unpredictable. They do not look like they will they'll stay in a serious rain condition. It is just impossible to tell. Pace car will bring them all to a stop. The crews will not be allowed to perform any other maintenance other than tire changes. Let's get down to Chris McClure. Yeah, there's a time limit on it, and you mentioned that already. They can go to rain tires. That's really the reason for the red. But they can also change the windshield. If they've got a regular race windshield in there and want to go to another one that's treated for the rain, they're allowed to do that. After that, they sit there with the car until they're ready to go back on the track because that's all they can do. Well, you heard it there. There's the voice of experience. That is the AER car. Ron Fellow is coming to a stop. He is our race leader. And even the AER owner, Buzz McCall, was kind of to hold an umbrella over Chris McClure. So I guess Chris is off slipping him a $5 tab for that one. Ron Fellow sits in the car. Back and racing in just a few moments. <laughs> Until you try to win a championship, you think it's no big deal. But then you find out how tough it really is. And you realize you can't gamble on anything. Not on the car, not on the engine, and certainly not on the tires. You just gotta go with the best. Goodyear Eagles, the proven winners. Goodyear, number one in racing, number one in tires. It isn't easy winning one of these things. And without Goodyear, it's almost impossible. Power up with a power engineered system from Competition Cam. Matching components for peak horsepower. Cams, lifters, springs, valves, rockers, timing sets, and push rods. An unbeatable system. Power engineered components produce outstanding power and outstanding torque. Cam Help is your toll free link to the Competition Cam's technical department. Call 1 800 999 0853. You can't beat a power engineered system from Competition Cam. At the heart of the new Aurora is a powerful 32-valve dual overhead cam V8. It lets you drive 100,000 miles before your first tune-up. It lets you go up to 50 miles in the event of total coolant loss. And for anyone who wants to know how powerful it is, that was Texas you just drove through. It's your money. Welcome back to Road Atlanta. Bill Adam, David Hobb, Chris McClure with you. The cars have made their pit stops. They now all have rain tires on them. And of course, now we're waiting for the sun to come back out, David. We certainly are, Bob. Uh, Bill Rotherman, from now on, these guys are on their own. If they decide to make another stop to change back to slicks, they have to do that at their own discretion and their own choosing of time. And it is sunny outside now. It is. It's such a huge gamble that they are taking because you just don't know how long to stay. But Chris McClure had a chance to talk to two of the drivers, Tom Candle, Ron Fellows. Crews continue the tire changes here, putting on the reins. We're with Tommy Kendall, who came in in the fourth position in the race. Obviously, conditions changing, but tell me about your race car. Is it, you got a good steed under you? I think we do. You know, the uh, Roush car felt good in the dry. And it's always been good in the wet, so uh, sitting behind that pace car for all those laps was frustrating. And uh, I'm sure the fans were want us to get going as well. So I don't care what they decide. Let's just uh, drop the flag and get back at it. Okay, what if it goes back to dry? How long can the tires last? Do you have to, when the, the decision begins to be forced? Uh, they will probably go much more than four or five laps if, it, if a dry line develops. Okay, Tommy Kendall, he sits quietly. The crews along here are continuing to work, and we'll move up to the man who was leading the race at the occasion of the red flag in the number three AER Chevrolet, the man who is pursuing the uh, championship behind Tommy Kendall. And came to the front relatively quickly. That would appear to suggest, uh, again, you got one on rails. 
Well, the car was very good in the dry, there's no question. It's uh, always a lottery when it's wet. Uh, it's really kind of a shame. But uh, we'll just have to go do the best we can in this. These uh, wet conditions again. Well, the best he can lately has been awfully, awfully good. It sure has, and one of the races that we saw Ron just absolutely dominate was the wet race out at Portland earlier. Now, as the cars form up to take the green once again, we'll take a look at the top 20 cars. Ron Fellows leads over teammate Jamie Gallus, Dorsey Schrader, Tom Kendall, Boris said three through five. Seventh, Scott, uh, sorry, sixth is Scott Sharp, Paul Gentilosi, Price Cobb, Brian Simo, Bill Saunders, the other Highway Master car back in 10th place now. 11th through 15th is looking like this with Brian Till, Tim McAdam, Rob Rizzo, just lost our graphic there for a second, we apologize. We'll get this right back. Ray Kong was the next in line, and then John Gooding, I believe, was 15. Cars snaking around the truck. They will be reforming as quickly as they possibly can, David. Yeah, the pace lights are, uh, the pace car lights are off, so they're obviously going to go this time around. As you've already said, uh, Ron Fellows put on a spectacular show at Portland in the rain. And uh, the way that chassis of his seems to handle, I, you know, I don't see this being a major problem. But as he said, the rain is always a bit of a lottery. There's no two ways about it. Well, the pace car dives off the track, and they're ready to take green once again here at Road Atlanta. Now the gamble, you're on a strange racetrack, basically. You've got no practice. How deep you go to these corners? Well, Dorsey Schrader is testing already. And this is the tricky corner because the water runs across it, so it collects air a lot. And you can see it streaming off those tires of Ron Fellows at the front end. Oh, and look at the spray behind the cars. These big rear deck spoilers just suck so much water off the track that for following vehicles, it's a huge problem. Brian Simo going up the inside of one of the high master cars over the curb, actually, but was able to make the pass. Boy, he did. That was Genelosi. He went around and look already. Ron Fellows is stretching out. Oh, and that car, the third spot car there of uh, Dorsey, Dorsey Schrader is snaking there as it went over that rain. Here is where you try to apply. Oh, and look at this. The rain X car is Scott Sharp. That's Simo again trying to get around another, trying to get around ah. Scott Sharp. He touched him going into the turn five complex. Again, massive spray behind these cars. This is down the far end of the track. Brian Simo, he is on the charge right now. This young man is really moving this tomboy car, the very, uh, car. Very appropriate, of course. Brian Simo owns the No Fear clothing outlet, <laughs> and uh, he's certainly showing no fear at all That's this afternoon. A very good point. They are on to the back straight. Now you're going to see a major wall of water being thrown up. Just look out behind Brian's car, showing there in sixth place, charging down the straight, where they were running 170 miles an hour. Now they're probably down to 140 in around that. A look at the lead already that uh, Ron Fellows has got here. Tommy Kendall strutting hard back there in fourth spot. Very bad spray. Wow, and here comes Simo absolutely flying through the dip there. Scott Sharp following to the yellow. Number six. Brian Simo has been so impressive since he joined the Trans Am Series last year. He is relatively inexperienced, but why? Gee, he does a fine job in these cars. Jamie Gallus also doing a fine job today. Now, he had his first, well, actually, he had a great one-two finish at our last race at Watkins Glen, right behind this man, Ron Fellows, winning Watkins Glen, and Jamie followed up with a strong second. They are running that way right now. Teammates, one and two. Very neat driving right there down through these S's. Just a tiny puddle at that one apex. Ron Fellows, there you see Jamie Gallows in the number two car, lying second behind him, Dorsey Schrader in the first of the Fords, but the Chevrolet... Whoa, and a spin! That was Dorsey Schrader, spun coming out of turn five. Ah, oh, and he's gone off, he'll never get out of there. He'll well, be stuck. He's going to have to be very careful. Oh. You can bet the wheels are spinning. Boy, oh boy, that I'm, was, a, I'm amazed. I am too. That just shows how good these Goodyear wet tires are. <laughs> that, that, all that tread obviously grips pretty well. This mud is very slippery, and, and for him to get out of that valley, that the great it's a great job. Boy, oh boy, that was amazing. Now well, we've got Tommy Kendall is up to third spot. Does that allow him to come to grips with the two Chevrolets? It's looking unlikely. A lot of passing going on back here. That's the... That is Schrader again. Was it Dorsey, back? yep, up alongside Scott Sharp in the Rain-X car. Normally Greg Pickett driving the number six car, but not today. And then I'm sure as Greg watches on TV, he's going to be glad that he's not here. Let's get a replay and watch what happened here. Back to Dorsey. Here we see Ron Fellows coming up through the S's, making it into the turn five complex, which is this very tight left hand here, very critical corner here, and just as he comes into there, 
Uh, do we see Jamie Gallus going out in second spot? And Orsi applies the power just a little bit too early. Backs her into the row there. Is passed by, what, three people? Yes. Uh, selects first gear and miraculously pulls it out. Oh. It's amazing. Amazing. Well, it's important for Dorsey to do this. His championship hopes are a long way from being dead here. They are slim, but he still can become the 95 Trans Am champion. Was a winner here in 1989 at Road Atlanta, which was also the year that he went on to claim his Trans Am championship crown. Down to the S's, one more lap. We watch Dorsey Schrader, who has slipped out of third place now. We'll look at one through five. Ron Bellows and Jamie Gallows leads Kendall, Seth, and Brian Simo up to fifth place. It's country star jamboree at Six Flags. Come join our bonanza of a celebration. Enjoy arts and crafts, special exhibits, festive foods, and foot stomping shows every day, September 2nd through the 10th, plus weekends in September. Featuring in concert this Saturday, Joe Diffie. Pick up big savings on your Six Flags admission with discount coupons from Burger King and come out for Country Star Jamboree only at Six Flags Over Georgia. At the New Home Shopping Network, you set the rules. Like more regular programs so I can find just what I want. Day from 9 to 11 a.m. Eastern Time, Home Shopping Network is stirring up excitement. Tune in for great values and perk up your morning with Coffee Break. It's your home, shouldn't you set the rules? Home Rules. America's first Home Shopping Network serves you best. Finally, somebody's playing by my rules. College Soccer Game of the Week. NC State takes on Indiana, live Sunday on Sports Out. Coverage of the 10th round of the 1995 SCCA Trans Am Championship is being brought to you by Ford and your local Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Well, Dorsey Schrader just took his Ford for a little spin around Road Atlanta. And right now, the leaders are Chevrolet. There goes the Ray Vestas car, having rejoined the race. You have to apply the power so delicately on this condition, Dave. You do, uh, but there's no doubt about it. These modern race tires, uh, modern wet weather race tires, are absolutely extraordinary. And it's one of the developments that's really affected passenger cars. We now got some amazing uh, all-weather passenger car tires, which come from the racing. There we see Brian Simo, who, as you said, is up to the fifth spot. And look at that. There is a slight dry line developing. It's hot down here. It's about 78 degrees. It's very humid, admittedly. But the fact ah. is, and look at this. Major this battle. The first, second, and third. By G. Ron. John Fellows has been caught by his teammate Jamie Gallus, and also Tom Candle has closed right up, so I wonder if something is amiss with something Fellows' car. must be either a miss with Fellows' car, or he got caught in traffic, or he might have put a wheel over the edge or something, but he has suddenly slowed up dramatically, falling into the grips, and now he's on his way again. He must have made him... No, Tommy Kendall looks like he's going to try and come down the inside of Jamie yeah. Gallus. I think Kendall is staying out of the spray right now. Let's go down to Chris McClure for a report. Well, quick update. Darcy Schrader off. Of course, that lap was terrible in terms of time, but the following lap suggests he didn't hurt the car. His crew says he didn't, and he was right back to the pace he had been before the spin. Yeah, you can tell his crew, Chris, Chris the, uh, the car does look fine. I don't think there was any damage to his car, just a little bit of ego damage right there. Ron Fellows, it looked like he was losing control of that big cushion that he had, but apparently has been able to reestablish it, so maybe he's just being extra cautious passing these cars. He must have been doing something to fall back, into, because he soon pulled out again. There's Don Sachs in the Oldsmobile, lets the other two cars go by. Now, uh, uh, Fellows going through three and into the four. As you can see there, the road suddenly drops away really steeply here. They disappear from view, start to swing right, really quick right hand to that. Got to make a good apex on both these corners and try and cut straight through here to get a good break into turn five. Of course, all of that is complicated immensely by the wet. This is so difficult for Kendall right now because he naturally wants to get as close as possible to try a pass, but the closer he gets, the poorer the vision. Exactly. You get you lose downforce, of course, because the turbulence from the car in front and you lose vision. It's a, it's a really uh, tricky car number 50 is off. Oh, and once again, we're seeing the value of the Goodyear racing tires. That is Bruce Nesbitt. Amazing. I didn't think these cars would move. The mud here in southern, southern Georgia 
Georgia is so slippery. This red Georgia clay is unbelievable. It's just like glue, and it gets in your clothes, and it, but it never ever comes out. Never does. You can see the race tires in these cars at the end of the season. You can tell when they were at Road Atlanta because they will all be stained by this red Georgia clay. I remember doing a Formula 5000 race back here in 1972 with uh, Al Unser, who went round all weekend with his jaw on the on the floor, kept saying, oh, I don't race the race, never race the race, because <laughs> so he wins the race easily. And I had those white overalls, those old Goodyear white overalls, and they got covered with that red clay. It never did come out. You were the first of the psychedelic driver of those yeah, coveralls. You, he drove a tremendous race that afternoon. It was just like this, too. Once again, Ron Fellows appears to be slipping back a, a bit. little tiny bit. Tom Candle, I think, is charging very hard right now. We've seen on a couple of occasions on that lap, the back of his car. But Morris said he's catching them all up. Morris said in the number four car with this new paint job, it used to be blue, now yeah. it's a nice, uh, I don't know what you call that, pinky red. But whatever it is, he's slicing up through the field to catch up with Tommy Kendall in what is the lead Ford. Morris said right there, the number four whisk, sure fine, Tom Gloy, Mustang, Cobra, what Good year. Goodyear shot car, yes. engine, V8. Our camera on board today, unfortunately, because of this weather, we are not able to bring you on board photography to show you just how diabolical this truly is. And we might add the reason we can't do that, of course, is because we can't have the helicopter which you need to get the, uh, the radio signal out of the car. The ceiling's too low, but the ceiling is definitely raised a lot. There is no rain out there at the moment. It could even break out into sunshine. And, of course, down here in Georgia, if the sun comes out, it's going to be instantly very hot and we'll dry this track out very quickly. And then these guys are going to be having to make some tough decisions because these rain tires don't last very long once it really does dry out. And well, you can see the line is definitely forming there. Yeah, it really is. And these the, the rain tires are designed to try and vacate the water as quickly as possible and dry the little section of track these cars are going over. And what they're doing by throwing the spray up in the air is drying the track very quickly, even with an absolute it's a breeze here today. Look at the line. You, you can see the rest of the track very shiny. There's reflections off the race cars. But where the cars are around there. Oh, Jerry Simmons, number 76. Now, he may be stuck off the track. He, he is that. well and truly stuck by the look of things in the gravel trap. Just about where uh, Dorsey spun. Yeah, he went off the outside. Now, that may cause a pace car to be brought out because that's quite a dangerous position right now. Yeah, it is. Ooh, lap traffic now. This is going to uh, throw a spanner in the works somewhat. No, Dale Fallon is moving over as both the Camaros get cleanly by. Kendall, I'm not so sure. Tommy may have been blocked right there. Jamie Gallus almost had an opportunity to pass. Tom Kendall did get cleanly through. This has really opened him up, or closed him up, rather. Now then, Tommy Kendall's going to be able to use that draft from the Chevrolets down the straight. Mind you, rather him than me having to overtake anybody on the outside of the dip. And the 76 car, too, has got out of the gravel. Well, Goodyear's uh, rain-slash-mud tires are doing wonderful things today to keep the race tight. Look at how close Kendall is, David. Well, Jamie... Oh. <sighs> Boy, oh boy, there's a bit of bravery there. Man. Wow. Huge maneuver by Tom Campbell. <laughs> oh. Great. Wow. You and I have both been through that section of track at high speed. Let's have done that. take another Rounding look at this. outside where it's wet, but ironically, oh. oh, gets on there. Jamie Gallus suddenly realizes he's been aced out of it, but doesn't oh. give up, and they come up the hill here, and Jamie Gallus is still right behind Tommy Kendall. So, Ron Fellows now being chased by his chief pursuer in the championship. So now we have first and second in the championship, lying first and second in the race, but in the opposite order to championship form. Man, that was tight to watch. And of course, Tommy Kendall needs a win badly because a lot of people are saying that it's not very good that he should be leading the championship by 15 points and still hasn't won a race. Well, here's our full field rundown, which is brought to you by Ford. Ron Fellows continues to lead, but just barely over Ford mounted Tom Kendall, Jamie Gallus third. Forrest said, Price Cobb and Brian Simo fourth through sixth. Dorsey's, Scott Sharp, Brian Till in ninth. Paul Gentilosi, Tim McAdam, teammates, Bill Saunders up into 12th. Rob Rizzo, Ray Kong, John Gooding, the other Roush car to 15th. Trent Terry, Bruce Nesbitt up to 18th. Dale Phelan, R.J. Valentine, and Jerry Simmons, who we just saw stuck off the edge of the track, having a snowplow berry. Bill Eagle, Bruce Barkalew, and James Moyer in 24th. Don Sack, Phil Bartelt, and of course, Tony Ave, who we saw retire earlier with problems. And Tom Candle goes for and gets the lead. 
of traffic in front of him now, too. Oh, squeaking through there. Boy, oh boy, that Tommy Kendall's got an attack of the Braves. He's obviously been on the Brave Bills today. That was a tremendous oh. Through the dip, comes up to the outside and goes wide onto the wet, off the off line, onto the wet stuff, slides down the inside of Ron Fellows. And I don't think that that Ford's got the grip the Chevrolet's got in the best of times. And boy, look at that. But Tommy Kendall is on a mission this afternoon. He caught up with these guys. Can he pull away? More incredible racing coming our way. We'll be right back. At Chevrolet, we're not just out here winning. We're testing suspensions, developing more powerful engines, and learning more about aerodynamics. Because if you want to bring more race-winning technology to the street than any other car company, sometimes you have to work weekends. That's genuine Chevrolet. This California Gold, finest cleaners, polishes, and finish restorers. Carnuba wax protects and shines. Easy to apply, looks great. California Gold, there's no shine like mothers. That's an old country. That's really old. Man, is that old. Only a country this young could create a car this cool. The Chevy Camaro. Two airbags, fuel injection, and a double wishbone suspension. Hey, you're only young once. The new Camaro. It's genuine Chevrolet. That is not a clip! It hadn't been a clip, but it's not a clip now! Can you see? We've run the play 25 times. All night it hadn't been a clip. Why is it a clip now? Can you hear me now? It's not a clip. Can you not see? It's not a clip. Welcome back to Road Atlanta, where we have a brand new leader in Tom Kendall. I think for the first time this season, we have just seen Ron Fellows pass during a race. That car has been virtually unbeatable, and it appeared it was going to be that way today, except Tom Kendall just drove by with unbelievable bravery. Well, Tommy Kendall's car does seem to be extraordinarily quick down this long back straightaway, so he comes off the end of the speed with the end of the straight with good speed. Now he's looking for water, see, going down offline there. Now he's looking for water to keep those rain tires cool because there's a number of laps to go yet. It obviously is not going to rain again, and the track is drying out quick. So Tommy Kendall now looking for water to try and keep those tires under his car to the end of this race. Let's get down to Chris McClure. One thing uh, Tommy Kendall cannot talk to his pit. He can hear what's coming from Dan Bing and the others as they walk the action come through the final turn and onto the pit straight. Like a man possessed is he, and I suppose with rain tires on, he's doing all the adjustments with the roll bar. Right, we already adjusted those. We did that on the yellow, got the rain tires on there, and he's just racing as hard as he can. We need the points. I mean, we're trying to win the championship. We need to be in front of Ron. And you need a win. You really do. We do. We had the, the one there at the Road America, and we didn't end up winning that. That was unfortunate. We need a win today. Well, right now, they're in the best position they could be. Well, they certainly are, but what a gamble is approaching us as this track is quickly drying out. Remember, all of the drivers are on rain tires right now. How much of a gamble do you think this is for Ron Fellows? Maybe he is deliberately backing off to try and save his tires. You can see Tom Candle way off the regular, quote, line at that point, trying to cool the tires, driving through the spray. So what do you think about a gamble on Ron's part, maybe backing off? Well, he, I mean, it's, it's all going to be a gamble from now on, isn't it? They're going to have to start looking for water. There's 14 laps to go. There's the Pontiac that we saw on the dirt a few minutes ago. Tommy Kendall running down the right-hand side of the straightaway here, looking for water to keep those tires cool. There's some really good water there. Got to be, be careful you don't run into a puddle at that sort of speed. Yeah. Down to the fastest part of the course, which is where he managed to dispatch of two people in, in rapid succession and did a, an incredible job there. I mean, he just used every inch of road. And although I think he got there quicker than the others, you still got to get around him on that slippery track. He did a magnificent job doing that. 
because Ron Fellows, of all people, is not going to be passed easily. But look at that line there. I mean, really is pretty dry here. Swoops back to the other side of the road to pick up more water. Yeah, and as he said, he expected under race conditions that good rain tires may last four or five laps only. So that is not very long. There is 34th, a great battle right now. Jamie Gallus and Laura Said are getting into it. So another Chevy versus Ford battle back in third and fourth. So good to see Boris Said too racing this car. They, they picked up some new sponsorship from Shaw, Fine and Whisk. And uh, looked at one stage if we were going to lose uh, Boris Said from the championship this year because he'd run out of sponsorship money, came back now fully sponsored. We're going to see him for the rest of the year. And he's a young guy really that's uh, done a lot of racing but never had a really good shot in a first class team like the Tom Gloy Ford effort. There you see Tommy Kendall coming back out of the way. Well. Now, Ron Fellows, interestingly enough, is not doing all that swooping all over the road. He is staying on the line. Not, not so much concerned with his tires, doesn't seem at the moment. Yeah, I wonder. Uh, two distinctly different schools of thoughts. You can see Fellows a little bit of a power slide out on the straight. Well, see, the, now there's the power slide coming out of turn seven. Boris said behind um, Gallus. Now, do we, these two guys go into the wet? Uh, Boris, yes, maybe a little bit. Let's get well for a report. Let's get back down to Chris McClure. Well, anticipating the changing racetrack, the sun is out here in the pits. Tommy Kendall can't call his crew and tell him if he wants to switch to slicks. They talked about that when they were stopped under the red flag, and basically is have them ready. When I'm on the pit road, we'll change the tires because it's his call, but he can't tell him when he's made the call. Well, that is a huge gamble, and, and how do you ever pull off the track and give up the lead? I mean, that's got to be the toughest thing of all to do. I don't think anybody, as long as the track stays as well as it's staying, you know, offline, a lot of these guys are going to use that water and uh, try and keep those tires cool. Boris said there's using the grass to keep his tires cool. <laughs> uh, there's plenty of water around here on that turn four. Mind you, you don't really want to be out that far. And through here, you don't want to use that water that's lying to the left of the screen as they come into turn five. There's plenty of water there on the outside. So I think these guys are waiting game. And there's Tommy Kettle. See right in yeah. the water on the left. And uh, Ron Fellow's not bothering with it at all. No. Of course, it's the, it's the shorter way around, so it's saving him a bit of time. But uh, Yeah, one of the other impressive performances right there. That's car number 15. And then you can see there's Dorsey Schrader back up there. So Dorsey's making a real charge at it. Dorsey Schrader trying to get around Bryce Cobb. Bryce Cobb and Dorsey now lying in the fifth or sixth position. Yes. So uh, Bryce Cobb's had a great run up to 14th. And Dorsey really? Schrader's been up, been back. And whoa! Oh. And <laughs> boy, oh, boy. Again. boy, that looked good, didn't it? Yeah. Shades of the sprint car that Dorsey loves to drive like that. Yeah, I have to say. Well, we're only a few laps before the finish. We'll take a few moments and have some important words from our sponsors. We'll look at the top ten as we leave you. Tom Candle continues to lead this race over Nemesis, Ron Fellows, Jamie Gallus third, Boris at fourth, and Price Cobb all the way up to fifth place. Six through ten looks like this, and we'll be back in just a moment. Homeowners, stop raking, piling, and hauling leaves and yard debris this fall. Call toll-free today for details on the revolutionary 4-in-1 Troyville Chipper Vac. It's a powerful walk-behind yard vacuum, perfect for fall leaves. It's also a handy chipper and an efficient shredder that turns hard-to-handle yard waste into a compact bag of wood chips and mulch. Plus, right now, you can have a brand-new chipper vac delivered direct to your home and receive a special $200 cash bonus now in effect. To find out how, just call for your free information package today. You'll get details on our new line of Troy Bill Chipper Backs, plus information on our special limited-time $200 cash bonus offer, and how you can get a valuable savings certificate for this handy hose back. So stop struggling. Call for your free information package today. For details on our complete line of Troy Bill Chipper Backs and how you can get our limited-time $200 cash bonus offer, call toll-free 1-800-652-7200. That's 1-800-652-7200. Call now. Hey, you always hear about what goes into oil. Well, I'm going to tell you what you'll get out of Kendall oil. One thing you'll get is an engine that lasts. And during the Kendall Twist and Shout sweepstakes, you can win a new ride and other cool prizes. Just buy a case of Kendall and check under the cap. There's 12 chances to win in every case. Hey, look, I won. I won. This is easier than winning races. 
Welcome back to the prime SECA Racing Road Atlanta Trans Am Classic. Bill Adam, David Hobbs, Chris McClure. A real day of gambling as it has gone from, from dry to rain and it is drying quickly once again. There is our leader, that is Tom Candle, with only a few laps to go. Desperately trying to conserve the tires, as is every driver right now. They are all on wet tires. They're wearing out quickly. Yeah, and of course, this is where you've really got to be careful not to power slide the car too much. More traffic in front, that dry line there. Very dry down through turns 12 and into turn 1. There's a bit of water on the inside here of turn 1, but not much. You can see it's very dry. Here's Ron Fellows in second. No, that's not Ron Fellows. Jamie Ron Gallus. Fellows. Ron Fellows all the way back to fourth place now. Morissette is up to third. What has happened to Ron Fellows? Well, maybe he's run the tires off his car, but I can't see why he would run his off significantly more than the others would, except no. that Tommy Kendall has been making very, very big efforts to keep his car in the wet that's there to try and uh, keep his tires cool. Morissette's car well and... Whoa, a big traffic jam through there. Boy, Jamie Gallus is just having a major problem right Jamie now with Gallus. Morris Ed. Morris was our winner earlier this year at Road America, Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin, and he would love to notch up another strong finish. Oh, Boris being badly bulked here by some lap traffic. In fact, again, you can see there's a lot of mud down the side of Ron Fellow's car. I wonder if he has had a little off-track excursion, perhaps? Ron Fellow squeaking by one of those lap cars as they come around the turn seven. So there you have Jamie Gallus, Boris said, and Ron Fellow. So Ron Fellow, this is not good for his championship no. quest at all because he came into this race 15 points down, 13 points down after qualifying. And uh, a, a Kendall win here and second place is not going to do him much good, but fourth will do him no good at all. In fact, we just did get a report that Ron Fellows went off at turn three. So that explains the mud down the side of the car. One of his uncharacteristic mistakes, Ron has been driving almost flawlessly this season. He has been the recipient of two very unfortunate incidents that have taken away all points from him. And his way back so Tom Candle right now leading over Ron's teammate Jamie Gallus Morris set up into third Ron is fourth just ahead of Price Cobb who has had a spectacular charge he's had a great run so you'd expect that Price Cobb really hasn't done quite as well this year as I must say I thought he would going in when I went to Phoenix and when Price Cobb was there and he won it I wasn't the least bit surprised because I thought Price was going to have a great year it just hasn't worked out quite like it should have done for him but it is his first year in Trans Am uh, and he is obviously a strong strong driver I think Ron maybe at this point is thinking his chances of winning today are gone, but if he were to finish ahead of Boris, then would Jamie maybe back off and allow his teammate to go through to collect those extra the points? Second, he should do. And of I course, it's one of those things that uh, a driver, you know, you tend to want to give up here. You think this has had it, we've had it. But I tell you what, racing is one of those things never, ever, ever give up because it's yeah. never over till it's over. Till that flag drops, you just don't know what's going to happen. No, so many times this year we have seen action happen on the last lap. Jamie Gallus now trying to go all over the track. Had a little bit of cold rain out of his tires to make them last these last few laps. And this, of course, this particular place here is particularly scary if you've got tires that you think might be on the blink. If you think the, the tread's going away on your tires and you're going through there at 155 miles an hour, you don't want the tread to come off the tire. And it does definitely wear on your mind to it's, go down the straightaway before you get there. It certainly would wear on my mind. <laughs> to turn one, Jamie Gallish, you can see his car spattered by a little bit of mud, and of course the windshields in all these cars, well they take the same sort of beating. Ooh, RJ Valentine and the seven. Yeah. Nice job by RJ in yeah. the Pennzoil car, moves out of the way for both of these, both of these cars going through. Because it's so hard for the guys who are being lapped, because they're looking desperately in the mirror and trying to look at the front as well. It is indeed. Now here's the battle between Price Cobb and Dorsey Schrader. This is fifth and sixth places. They are locked in a serious battle, and they too, you can see the cars are sliding wide. I assume the that lump of mud there is Ron Fellows' mud. I believe it is. That yeah. was turn three, so that's where Ron went off and was able to rejoin. Ooh, Price Cobb having his work cut out here to hold up Dorsey Schrader. That's where Dorsey spun just a moment ago. Oh, right under the bumper as they come down to the turn six. Is he going to be able to go the long way around? Well, I don't think Price is going to let him. He is going to make that car slide Whoa. as wide as he can. Dorsey there now. Slip through on the inside yep. now. Dorsey, oh, that's what I did. Dorsey. Oh boy, he's driving that car sideways today. Yeah, and it goes the more he does that. Oh, oh and that's Brian Till on the track. the sixth car there. Now, Greg if that car requires a pace car, if you're Ron Fellows, do you gamble? Do you dive in the pits for, for dry tires? Don't ask all the questions like that. Oh, well, maybe this is the chance for Ron Fellows, but 
There's probably only six or seven laps left, I would think. Major gamble. And they may not bother with a pace car because uh, to get a pace car out, it's going to take three or four laps. It's going to leave you about three flag, three laps of uh, yeah, green and, flags. And so. it's a relatively safe spot too yeah. because it's the slowest corner on the track. So we are being advised there is a full course yellow. So, whoa, here we go. You can bet the crew chiefs are talking to the car saying, okay, do you come in for slicks? Do you leave the rain tires on? Oh, man, this is the gamble time. Well, we'll find out exactly what does happen right after these words. the gators or dinner isn't easy on a truck like me so when i'm blue i have an idea that works i pour down a bottle of berryman fuel injector cleaner ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh. wow i feel friskier and you'll feel it in your vehicle too i gotta run There's nothing like a day at my favorite little fishing spot in my Bass Hunter boat. You won't find a more safe, stable boat anywhere. It's lightweight, easy to handle, and has plenty of room for two people, plus gear. And did I mention affordable? Why, I didn't even have to negotiate a bank loan for my Bass Hunter boat. Yep, these days are golden thanks to my Bass Hunter. If you can picture yourself at your favorite fishing spot in a Bass Hunter boat, call 1-800-345-4689. Remember, the original Bass Hunter. Well, we are back at Road Atlanta, and if you like gambling in Las Vegas, you will love this racetrack because it is a place to be. You can see the line is drying out as they're trying to pull Brian Till's car out of this sand trap, one of the safety features around the edge of the track, and look at how clean this is becoming. Let's get down to Chris McClure. The call has been made for a second highway master car to come in. This one is Price Cobb. On the right side of the car, two slicks will go on, then they'll have to go to the other side. They can only have three people over the wall to work on the car, so these changes take a long time, but they've decided they simply can't get anything out of the rain tires. What's left underneath, so they've gone to slicks. Well, I think it's a perhaps a good call if you're further back in the pack, but Price was so far up, I don't know if I agree with that, David. Well, of course, the thing is now that we're getting down to like six laps ago, I think next time by will be only five laps, and I think you're rather off to let the tyres last for five laps and stop at this stage and put slicks on. Well, you can see who is out of the race so far, and uh, we're going to be coming back with the final few laps. Action is endless at this race today, and we're going to find out who wins the Trans Am Classic at Road Atlanta. Cliff here at IHOP. Some people feel just too silly ordering IHOP's Rudy Tooty Fresh and Fruity Breakfast. <laughs> I mean, it is a goofy name for two eggs, two bacon, two sausage, and two pancakes with your choice of fruit topping. But you'd have to be a real wimp to be embarrassed by something like that. I'll have the Rudy Tooty Fresh and Fruity Breakfast. Nobody does breakfast like IHOP does breakfast. <laughs> Coffee, too. $2.99, Rudy Tooty Breakfast, Monday through Friday, $2.99 at IHOP now.
two laps to go here, Road Atlanta. They're attempting to get Brian Tilskar out of that trap, just right back in the distance. You can see the tow truck working, trying to get it away. There, they're just hooking it up right now. In fact, they have got it clear of the trap. So hopefully we will be able to resume green flag racing in just a moment. We apologize for a little bit of mist on our camera lens, but this heat and humidity is giving difficulties to everybody, not just the drivers. Brian trying to get around here without damaging the car. These cars do not have great turning circles. Not the thing to go shopping with. No, and they don't like donut turns either. No, they don't. Too how, heavy. And how too do you make one. a U-turn in one of these cars, David? Uh, with difficulty. It is. Pace car down through the dip one more time. Now, we never get a chance very much to talk about what fills these tires. But earlier, Chris McClure found out. Bottled nitrogen is drier and more stable than air. Therefore, it has a number of applications in any race team. First application has to do with the tires. When they get them from Goodyear, they take out the air, they put in nitrogen, and when it heats up, it builds the pressure more predictably. Very, very stable. Same thing applies to the shock assembly. 250 pounds of pressure in here when the heat builds, the nitrogen pressure builds more predictably. In the case of the tire gun, it's a matter of convenience. They can get the nitrogen easily to the pits. They hook it up here. They run the gun. It's also drier going through the mechanism so it doesn't wear out. Now, this other one is also a matter of convenience. A Rocket Sports uh, crew member built this. It goes in the side of the car. You attach it here, what they call the bowling trophy, then becomes a lifting mechanism for the car. When they're on the pad, they just simply lift it up, just like that. It is very predictable because nitrogen does not hold the same moisture content that air does, and as a result, when these tires do heat up and they get very hot, racing temperatures well over 200 degrees, you don't get that same expansion. So the predictability is so important. They love consistent race cars. Well, the cars are going around one more lap here behind the, the pace car. Now, Tommy Candle came to Atlanta a day early this week to visit the Salvation Army's Bellwood Boys and Girls Club in downtown Atlanta. With an audience of nearly 75 kids, Candle talked about racing and signed autographs, but more importantly, he spoke about following your dreams and setting goals to reach them. As a volunteer for Racers Who Care, Candle visits groups of children and teenagers at almost every Trans Am event. A really nice effort by a really nice guy, Tom Candle. And Tom Candle is our leader right now. Now, this is kind of strange, David. You can see him trying to keep temperature in the tire. Well, now. pace car light's just gone out. Uh, you do need a little bit of temperature in the tire, of course, but um, most important at this stage, they need tire under the cars. We saw Bill Saunders' tire. Now, Bill wouldn't have worn his tires out quite like our front runners would have done. But on the other hand, this yellow, long yellow period has probably saved the day for any uh, heart-aching uh, decisions because they're going to be able to run the final three laps without any problem. Well, they're just taking a one last look at the back straight before they see the green flag. This is what our top ten looks like. Tom Candle continues to lead over Jamie Gallus. Six through ten is like this. We'll be right back with the exciting finish. The Ritz-Carlton Amelia Island. Where the time-honored traditions of a sporting vacation are only a short drive away. Experience unsurpassed amenities, uncompromised personal service, and the inspirational elegance and timeless beauty of our Grand Beach Resort. The Ritz-Carlton Amelia Island, just minutes north of Jacksonville, Florida. Hey, one old says it's got special molecules. Another says it's for little engines. One even makes it sound like oil can think. Come on. What's the square root of four? See, I use Kendall oil because it lets my engine do the talking. So next time you change oil, be smart. Use Kendall. Win a 95 Pontiac Grand Prix and other cool stuff. Get a scratch and win game card when you have your oil changed at a participating Kendall dealer. Kendall Motor Oil. Hey man, buy it. Inside every one of us is an athlete with a thirst for the game going on around us. It's life. And if you play hard at it, you get thirsty. That's why we make Gatorade. Hey, 
life is a sport. Drink it up. Back at Road Atlanta, we are expecting to see the pace car peel off the track and drop into the pits, and we will have our final few laps of racing here. And boy, what a gamble, David. I just, I don't know what I would do. Well, I think the gamble's been taken away from them, Bill, by the, this extended caution period. We've only got three or four race laps to go, and I think that all these guys are going to be able to keep it going um, through that length of time. We saw Gooding's tyres, and we saw uh, Bill Saunders' tyres. They weren't that bad, and... Uh, it's going to be tricky, though. Well, Max Jones, team leader, looking, and he's watching for Jamie Gallus. And Gallus is very close to Candle. An extremely good start by Jamie Gallus. Challenging up the outside, Tom Candle making a defensive move down the inside. And looking back in third place, Boris said, right up on the tail of Gallus. Boris said they're thinking seriously about taking second point away. And, of course, holding off Ron Fellows in the Chevrolet. Now, one of the difficulties, you can see there is a dry line all the way around, but to try and pass, you have to gamble there and go on the wet. And, of course, you lose a lot of grip by doing that, and I think these guys are going to gamble on the fact that they can do three laps to go on this dry track and not tear those tyres up. As yes. Tommy Kendall said at the beginning, or rather when he changed tyres, three or four laps on these wets is about all they'll take in the wet, uh, in the dry, and uh, that's all they've got, three laps. And already Tom Candle decides to go over out of the wet part of the track to try and salve whatever he can. Meanwhile, Ron Fellows, it appears, has dropped back even further. He has lost his fourth place now. Jamie Gallus hanging on gallantly here, too. Tommy Kendall, oh. Tommy Kendall looking for some water. Whoa. Somebody well off the track there. That's Scott Sharp was way off. Look at again. Fellows' car, the front of his car, is covered with mud. Ron may have had another off-course excursion. John Gooding now tries to get past. Wow, John Gooding weaving around there, trying to get around Scott Sharp. That looks a bit uh, hairy. A me. lot of people having really good runs today. Jamie Gall is still in a serious challenging position. They have both pulled away from Boris Said, who is running in third. But look at Jamie. Jamie Gall is oh. holding on brilliantly here to Tommy Candle. He is really strong today. Again, Candle goes for the moist part of the track. Gallus follows him and then goes back up the outside. There is Dan Banks, Tom Candle's longtime friend and crew chief. I believe they have been 10 years together, these fellows, in a variety of race cars. Two laps to go, Tom Candle hanging on for all he is worth, and Jamie Gallus just feet behind with Boris Sett, certainly in a position to pounce. Boris Sett seems to have lost out just a little bit to these guys. You can see the car there of Tommy Kendall starting to squirm on he those is. tires. It is definitely starting to slide. That is the tread starting to give up, getting a lot of temperature in those uh, tread sipes now. Ford's looking very strong. Up. You can see Mustangs running first, third, and fourth right now. Kendall, though, a masterful driver, just like Ron Fellows. He's not going to be easily hustled. That is Rob Rizzo's car. You can see so close to the end of the race, and obviously he is out. Once more onto the back straight, Tom Kendall swings over to the wet part of the track. Not much moisture left, but every little bit is helping at this point. Again, Boris said seems to come on very strong down these straights, so that Mike Lozano motor is a real powerhouse. Well, there's no doubt these Fords are quick in a straight line, and of course, Tommy Kendall was really quick here on two occasions. Dorsey Schrader back up into fourth place. And uh, we seem to have lost Ron Fellows. We the seems to have dropped right off the pace. He must have got a car problem of some sort. Could be stuck in A gear or, uh, or had a problem of some sort because he's not like him to be out of this race at this juncture. Well, this has a major effect on our championship position because that man, number 11, Tom Campbell, is the leader in the Drivers' Championship this year. This will help solidify his position. It does not lock it up for him, but it certainly helps the battle. He has a good Whoa, look at him slide there. Wow. Those rear tires just starting to give up. Now, you watch it come through here. Slides there. Big squeegee slide there. Into As does Dorsey. Five, down to second. You can see there is Fellows way back, barely holding off a charging Scott Sharp right now. Fellows' car is covered with mud. Absolutely. Down to two. Oh, and there's a car stopping the truck. That was RJ Stopped the bad spot there. Into turn seven for the last time. The key corner, one of the key corners here. He's going to come out of here well. Whoa, Tommy there sliding as he exits the corner. Not going to bother with the water this time. I wouldn't think he's going to take, take it too far out of his way. He's going to stay on line and make sure. I would sure agree. And look at Jamie comes. how close he is. Jamie Gallus looking to get around. Get up. Danny Vicks can't look. He, he does tried. not want to watch this. Here is Jamie's chance, David. Oh, 
Oh, it's a bad place to take a chance, although Tommy Kendall did it to him under the bridge. Now's his chance to try and slide by Tommy Kendall as they come down to turn 12 for the last time. It's going to be really close. Tommy Kendall is going to be the winner of the Road Atlanta Trans Am Classic Whoa. right to the edge of the road for the checker flag. Finally, he gets his first win of the season. Jamie Gallus, an excellent second place finish. What a race from Jamie Gallus. Ron Bellows. Bellows has crashed. He is stopped on the track. I think he crashed in the dip. Hard to tell exactly where that was, but boy, oh boy. Let's get down to Chris McClure. Huge celebration breaking out here. I tell you, I said it to you, and I know you've thought it a lot, Dan Binks. You had to win one. Yeah, we just tried all year and just couldn't win one. We struggled. We had the fastest car at a bunch of places. I tell you, the kids stuck in there. We, we tried to get on the bowl. You know, we didn't get that. We got second, trying to get some points. Kendall, he just dug deep and won this one. It's awesome for Allsport and Ford. Great deal. I tell you what, you've been with town when you won some races along the way, but I don't know. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I suggest it might be what, the sweetest. Well, maybe the sweetest. We've, we've been in a little dry spell here, and we're, we're real sweet about this one. We really like that. And thanks a lot. He couldn't talk to you, but I wonder how close were those tires. What would you think? Oh, the tires are done, I'm sure. We were just trying to keep them pumped up so we didn't think they were bad. You know, he, he knows what it feels like, so he did an absolutely fantastic job. Well, Tommy Kendall, with this man's help, takes a big step toward a title. I don't think it's wrapped. No, it is not wrapped, Chris, but you can tell how important it is from the emotion and the, the, the emotion that not only was in his voice, but in his eyes. Very, very important day for this young man, Danny Banks. Really, genuinely, one of the nice guys in the Trans Am Series, and there are sure a lot of them. Well, a heartbreak day for Ron Fellows. You can see he did not complete the last lap. His points, championship hopes. I think he got tagged into Scott Sharp's car there. The I rear believe. end is all hanging off. I think they had it coming together there, just coming out of turn five. I think you're right, too. I think that's exactly what happened. Maybe we can get Chris to talk with Scott Sharp and find out, but this is going to seriously damage championship hopes for Ron Fellows. He has worked his heart out, as has this guy, Tom Kendall. Boy, what a season. I wouldn't have thought it possible to see Tommy Kendall go through a season this far without winning. No, I, I agree. It's, it's quite extraordinary that he hasn't had a win. Uh, considering he's been on the pole so many times, he's set so many fast laps, he's always looked so competitive, but just somehow, when it's come to the day, he has not been able to take that checkered flag, and it must have been griping him somewhat uh, severely, and of course he's been leading the championship, but it's just not the same as winning races. Well, we're going to get a chance to talk to these people and a lot more when we come back right after these words. Don't go away. Road Atlanta will be back in your living room in just one moment. At Chevrolet, we're not just out here winning. We're testing suspensions developing more powerful engines, and learning more about aerodynamics. Because if you want to bring more race-winning technology to the street than any other car company, sometimes you have to work weekends. That's genuine Chevrolet. The difference between winning and losing a championship isn't anything big. Usually you can measure it in tiny fractions of an inch. That's why every IndyCar champion out here drives on Goodyear Eagles. In a sport driven by precision, Goodyear gives us one less thing to worry about. Goodyear, number one in racing, number one in tires. I've tried different cars and different engines, but I think I'll stay with Goodyear. Power up with a power engineered system from Competition Cam. Matching components for peak horsepower. Cams, lifters, springs, valves, rockers, timing sets, and push rods. An unbeatable system. Power engineered components produce outstanding power and outstanding torque. Cam Help is your toll free link to the Competition Cam's technical department. Call 1 800 999 0853. You can't beat a power engineered system from Competition Cam. Some things in life you have to wait for. A car of your dreams shouldn't be one of them. The Chevy Camaro. Two 
airbags, fuel injected V6, anti lock brakes. It's $14,995 worth of genuine Chevrolet. Welcome back to Road Atlanta. The celebrations are about ready to start. There is the winner of our Ray Bestos Rising Star Award. That is John Miller, a newcomer to the series, and he's got to be a pretty happy young man today. Very nice performance, John. He's telling his crew to come on over. Let's go over to Chris McClure. Well, I just got the cool suit off. Tommy Kendall getting out the window. He's going to stand on the roof first. <laughs> And the Ford folks gathered around are certainly pleased with this moment in the Georgia sunshine, as it turned out. Tommy, now we get a little bit of a shower, precursor to the victory stand in just a couple of minutes. A few weeks ago, he said, or suggested, finally, and that one you didn't keep. This one you're going to. Oh, no doubt about it, man. Uh, my hat's off to the Roush guys. You know, they've uh, kept digging, and when they've, guys have had a lot of momentum on us, and uh, everyone thinks we were just going to cruise to the championship, but I'll tell you what, the, the conditions like they were today, I was flying blind, so uh, I'd like to thank God for a nice, safe race. Uh, he must have been driving because I couldn't see where I was going, and uh, the all-sport car was uh, the class of the field. You know, it was a tactical race, but um, these guys kept me well informed. I couldn't talk back to them, so they had to figure out what I wanted. It was, uh, you know, it's tough to see Ron have those problems on the last lap there, but uh, we've had our share as well. How much were the bars able to affect the car and give you the setup you needed after the red? I mean, you talk about it, but you can't do mechanical adjustments. No, we have the adjustable bars inside the car, and, uh, you know, you can play with the brake bias a little bit, and you have to just alter your driving style. You know, the guys, I'm sure you could see me searching for every last bit of water I could find, and if I could have talked to the crew, I would have probably convinced them to put slicks on when the last yellow came out, but I guess I'm, I guess I'm glad I didn't, but uh, I'd like to say hi to everybody at home. I'm tickled. You know, this has been a long time coming. Big step toward the ultimate goal. Sure is. You know, we'll just keep digging. Well, a worthwhile battle today for Tom Candle because it sure tightens up the point battle. Now the lead is Chevrolet 75 over Ford at 71, and that means the final showdown is going to come at Sears Point in California. Huge, huge battle coming out there, folks. Well, this presentation of the 10th round of the 1995 SCCA Trans Am Championship is being brought to you by Chevrolet. One automotive company has won more races over the last 30 years, genuine Chevrolet. From Road Atlanta, this is Bill Adam for David Hobbs and Chris McClure thanking you for joining us and reminding you to be with us October 8th as we bring you the grand finale from Sears Point Raceway, the final chapter and what a story it promises to be. Coverage of the Sports Car Club of America's Trans Am Series has been presented by First Auto Sports Television in association with the Prime Network.